The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 27th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening live at the normal time at 11.07, thanks so much for doing that. We'll make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. If you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger's den, and you should be, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. As of 8.08 in the morning, we got U.S. equity futures trading futures trading to the upside. S&P futures up 20 points. Uh, NASDAQ 72, Dow 158. Uh, Russell's up uh, 12. Uh, Percentage-wise, Russell's the biggest, about six-tenths of a percent. Spot volatility is trading lower. It's still below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's always a bullish signal for the S&P 500. Over in Asia last night, markets were mixed. You had the Shanghai and the Hang Seng finishing lower, about by a little over 1%, 1 to 3 tenths percent for the Hang Seng, and the Nikkei up nearly 1%, 364 points there. The Nikkei still has a top, but uh, today's close may, in fact, as, as suggest that price will go after that uh, Rhodes Momentum indicator high out there. The DAX is uh, trading up 100 points right now. That's a positive thing for the NASDAQ. We know about the correlation between the DAX and the NASDAQ. If the DAX stays higher, and I don't see any kind of topping pattern, by the way, inside the DAX, we should see the NASDAQ also do the same. You've got gold and silver trading higher. Gold's up nine bucks. Silver's up two pennies. You've got light speed crude off 43 cents. Natural gas down three pennies. Uh, the U.S. dollar index is up by uh, 10 cents, trading out at 104.09 or thereabouts. I do have a 10 minute delay there. Let's try to figure out, let's do that summary. I didn't do a update, a uh, 8 a.m. update, but let's just take a look at our market update charts. Just gives us, gives us an overview of the markets, where we begin our day as we start diving into some of the detailed charts. So the ES Mini is up in the upper left-hand corner that has what's referred to as a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We can see that price remains above the top of its profile, 52.57. So it's still strong like bull out there. And it ain't no bull. If you take a look at the spot volatilities, it is below its 50-day exponential moving average. Now, we are beginning to see a rising bottoms pattern here in the spots. That usually is a prelude to a move lower inside of the S&P 500. That certainly would be the case with the close above 1380. We're trading right now at 1309. The NQ also has a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. It's basically been a sideways move since that pattern has formed out there. 18709 is the resistance level that if closed above would tell us that we are going to rally higher. The U.S. dollar index is testing its TD9 count top. There's a new daily profile that is attempting to form. It is bearish in structure. That new profile has resistance. So 10419 is the top of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. 104.198 is the top of the new profile. A close above that negates that signal and says we move higher. A close below the center of the profile, 10392, assuming that it takes hold. I 
won't have confirmation on this profile until 6.01 this evening. Well, probably even beyond 6.01 this evening, but it'll be later on this evening when I get confirmation. So we'll review that tomorrow morning at the normal 11 o'clock uh, slot out there. But if price does close below 103.92 and this profile does hold, that's a signal that the U.S. dollar index would be pulling back to test profile support. That's down at the 103.51 level. Goldilocks still has its TD9 count top. Price is simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. This is the June contract that we're taking a look at. Support is at 2160, resistance up at 2223. If we take a look at silver, it too is consolidating with inside its daily profile. It has support down at the 2436 level, resistance at 2551. Lights Recruit has a sell the D point pattern. It is consolidating with inside its profile, but it hasn't, it's, where it's finding support is the buy zone, really at the top of the buy zone. It's a bullish structured profile, and I know it provides you and I with a competitive advantage out here versus others. Understanding these profiles, understanding where support and resistance is, that's one of the things that it's all about, short of identifying top and bottom signals out there. If we take a look at Lights Recruit, it's finding support again in that buy zone, the upper end, which is 8044. The lower end of that buy zone is at 7911. Resistance stands at 8312, the top of the profile. Natural gas, a close below 1.750 today. We're at 1.756 right now. Would negate its buy the D point pattern and just suggest that we head lower out there. And the 30 year treasury looks like it wants to go target that 12023 level out there. So that's the overview of what's going on inside of the uh, over of the markets overall. Let's uh, go switch over and take a look at what's going on intraday out here. And we'll start by taking a look at the ES Mini. Give me a moment. We'll get over to our white background charts, multi, multi time frames. You and I have already covered the daily time frame. What I'm going to do is actually just shift all the way down to the 10 minute because the 10 and the 15 minute, they're the only ones that have a topping pattern that show why price began pulling back at about 720 this morning. This is a 10 minute time frame chart. And the 10 minute time frame chart, what I've identified here is the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, in order for Stevie to tell you that a A to B equals CD pattern is completed, the market needs to tell us that. How does the market do that? It generates bullish or bearish reversal candles. In this case here, this is an A to B equals CD to the upside. What generated was a Three River Evening Star. It did that at 710 out here. Price then rallied back up to test the profile resistance up at 52.88. How does that happen? You got to have these profiles, folks. They are so helpful to help you understand why price is doing what it's done and also generate a bearish engulfing candle that session. That's kind of like a double confirmation of that Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, price closed below the bottom of that profile for two consecutive sessions. That was at 810. Right now, we've got seven minutes left in this session. And if price can close back about 52.85, even though we're two below uh, the bottom of that profile, which gave us a profile change in trend signal, that would suggest that, uh, well, price has regained the profile and maybe it's not gonna head lower. Whereas at 8.20, and I don't know that I'll get back to this, if we see another close below the bottom of that profile, again, the number to write down is 52.85, really I'd write down 52.85.50, says 38 on my system, you can't trade to that, we'll round up to the next Next quarter tick out there, and that would be 52.85.50. If price closes below that, the 10 minute chart is signaling to you and I that price may be getting ready to pull back towards the 52.78. That's the 10 minute time frame chart. The 50 minute time frame chart also has that same A to B equals CD pattern. The 30 minute does not. In fact, the 30 minute chart says that we want to head much higher, but it's got resistance at that 52.89 area. Here in the case of the ES mini for the 15 minute time frame, the question is where is it that price could find support if that 10 minute the chart confirms that we're headed lower. Well, the 15 minute chart, because it's got that same pattern and it also has a, a bearish engulfing uh, bear sash candle out there, says 52.8175 would be an area of support. If price closed below 52.81, then that opens up that door for lower price. And lower price, I would say, it's already been a tested level of support that formed a TD9 count pattern earlier this morning at 4 a.m. That would be at 52.76.75. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back to this break. We're going to take a look at Goldilocks for Marcus in the Tigers' Den. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. 
Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in a fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, first question that came in this morning from Marcus inside the Tiger's Den, it reads like this. That's sort of a question, more of a statement. Gold remains strong despite strength inside the U.S. dollar index. Uh, silver, platinum, palladium, all fairly weak. Is gold finding support because of war footing out there? My response was uh, it's certainly that's a possibility. I can't predict when a war does or doesn't happen out there. We do know that when wars do break out, that uh, metals will really start moving higher out there. We know that inflation hasn't really been a significant impact impact on uh, gold. We know we've been in an inflationary time period for several years now, and it's not like gold has really taken off, although we are up towards the highs out there. But my response was, look, we just need to take a look at the technical tools. Let those be our guide out here. So let's begin that journey. Brent uh, in Martinez, California actually wrote in. He's asking about the gold contract as well as a couple other stocks. So we'll take a look at some mining stocks as well. So let's begin this journey. Here's what we know. We're going to take a look at a daily, a weekly, and a monthly time frame. We are trading the June contract, so it's nice. I've got enough data out here for us to take a look at this. Um, so we're not using a continuous contract. and We're actually using live, real prices out here. Now, in the case of Goldilocks, gold formed a TD9 count top. It confirmed that pattern on March the 8th. The very next trading session on March the 11th, it completed that pattern. That high is a key level of resistance. That high being up at the 2187.30 level. If price closes above that, that pattern gets negated. And then we need to see two closes above 22.23.30. That's the top of its daily profile. And then we'll have a profile change in trend and we would have a negated TD9 count. That would then suggest that price should continue to move higher. I go to the next higher time frame to try to figure out where that would be. When we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for gold, what we don't see out here is any kind of a topping pattern. What we do see is a large A to B equals CD pattern. So the intermediate term time frame chart for gold, let's go ahead and put this in and I'll give you the approximation out here. 
this is just simply a cut, paste, and assemble. I, I like to do that because it allows you folks to also do the same thing. Now maintain that exact same angle of that A to B line to the C to D point. That's worth millions of dollars out there, at least one dollar. Now we can see that that A to B equals C D pattern inside of the weekly time frame chart has a price projection of 2300 area out there. But I would share with you that it looks to me like this retracement, this B to C retracement is less than a 0.618. If you do less than a 0.618, retracement odds favor you do more than a one-to-one -one a to b equals cd now marcus we don't have to worry about this pattern at this moment right now because it's a daily that's blocking this from taking place but if in fact we get those two consecutive close above 22 23 30 war or not what this is going to signal is that continuation of that move higher now we're towards the end of the month out here today is what the 27th we have a few more days away. we got one more day of trading and then uh, what is monday is monday the 31st let me see out here Monday is the April 1st. So tomorrow is the end of the trading session out here. So with regard to uh, today's Wednesday, yeah, tomorrow's the end of the trading session for, well, no, I take that back. Gold may be trading on Friday for Good Friday. I, 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 you have to take a look at the uh, hours out there and see what's happening. But here's the point. If at the end of the month, whatever that is, uh, if gold closes above 20 191.20. 21.91.20 was a wave number seven pattern. That's that letter G. But we can see that the following month in June, in January 2024, that was a bearish engulfing candle, and that confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. We can see that right now prices trade above that. We're 22.0770. Again, the number to write down in your pad of paper out there is going to be 2027. I'm sorry, 2021.91.20. 20, 21.91.20. 20, the price closes above that, it negates that signal, and we would have a monthly and a weekly chart that are telling you and I price wants to move higher. However, it is still the daily time frame that would be controlling that signal, and that topping pattern must fail. So those are the daily parameters for gold. Now, you may remember, maybe you don't remember, I made a major bottom call for gold here, and I did that based on the following pattern, and I did that... Um, Weeks ago, months ago, probably a couple months, a couple months ago, back in the time frame of um, of February, we're already in um, in March. How about that? One month later, but back in February, I was suggesting that what we would see in gold is a major bottom formed. I still believe in that call. What we can see here, these are the dance steps for uh, gold out here. This is the monthly dance steps, and typically in a bull market. In a strong bull market, all you will see is a two-month retracement. Two months where we see a lower close out there. And that's exactly what February set off. How do we know that? Now, on this chart here, I would have to go, and I'll do that. Let me just do, not destroy the entire thing. Let me put up the continuous contract in this instance here. And we can go back. We could take a look at other bull runs. And we're looking at the bigger picture, the monthly picture out there, which I really think is what uh, Marcus was really after, was the bigger picture with regard to gold. So if we take a look at the, uh, here's a bull run. Uh, this bull run had a three-month rally. This is a bull run that uh, took us from September of, of, uh, of 2018 up to the 2000 and a 20 top out there. Uh, so here we had a three bar retracement. Let's go back even further out here. Do I have the data? That's the question. Uh, there we go. Let's take a look at the 2011 bull run. Here you can see you've got a two bar retracement back into January of 2010. You had another two bar retracement back in June of 2011. If I add more, but if I add more data, it's going to show really the same thing. So the real key here is the mere fact that we've had that two bar replacement, two bar knee jerk reaction low, and that could be telling us the start of a major move higher out there. Now we're not going to stop there. The reason we're not going to stop there is because of uh, because Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den said, hey, Steve-O, as long as you're doing the early show, can you at least put up those horizontal trading range boundary lines out there? And hey, folks, your request is my command out there. I am here during this 53 minutes to serve you. So feel free to get in all those requests out there, but I only have another 30 minutes left of this show. But let's go take a look at the horizontal trading ranges for gold out here. Bud Rolfs is the one. He's, he, he was, uh, for many years, was a uh, contributor here. And he created something, and I believe he's the one that created it, called primary trading ranges. Everything was done visually. Of course, I'm a, I was a tad younger, not much, but a tad younger. And I went ahead and uh, got the folks here at eSignal. 
a uh, hired programmer basically, and uh, had them automatically program those in. So my system is different, slightly different, quite different, I think, than Bud Rolfs, and I'm referring to these as horizontal trading range boundary lines. What they do, as an example, um, here if we take a look at a um, – Let's just take a look at this monthly time frame chart. I'll expand it out. These lines out here, these uh, dashed lines, they each, so if we take a look at the largest number of co-located opens and closes, when I say co-located, I don't care if it's an open or a close out there, but it needs to be one of those two. The price level of 13, 13, 10, this takes us back to 1996. That has the largest number of opens and closes, 23 to be exact, uh, for this entire time period. That sets up one of the first uh, horizontal trading ranges. The next one that shows up is 1570. So these things will change. They continue to analyze data and then go ahead and shift these horizontal trading ranges if it's appropriate to. So 1570s had seven closes. That sets up that horizontal trading range. Every additional line out here is nothing more than that value, that value of the difference between those two lines out here. Now, what is the monthly time frame chart telling us? Monthly time frame chart here is signaling what we just looked at when we looked at the multi time frame set of white background charts, and that is that price wants to add higher. Now, its price target would be 2340. 2340 would be its next horizontal trading range. I ask you this question before we go to break How strong was 2083.90? That's a horizontal trading range as being resistance out there. How well do these horizontal trading range boundary lines work? I'd say pretty darn good. So here's what we know. If we get it closed in gold above that TD9 count high, let's say two closes above 22, 23, 30, gold's headed to 2340. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we left off, uh, take a look at these primary horizontal trading ranges for gold. We were looking at the monthly time frame. Now you're looking at three views. So those three views show you the monthly on the left, the weekly in the center, the daily on the right-hand side. Each of these are telling us about a move that gives us price targets. 22.50 is the price target on the daily, 22.96 on the weekly, 23.40 on the uh, monthly time frame. But still, price has got to take out those TD9 count tops out there. No. How is price uh, doing in other major currencies out here? And that's really important for us to take a look at. Because uh, when the real bull markets, you see an instrument moving higher in all these major currencies. I've got just now the euro and the uh, pound up here. And we can see that today, in, from an intraday standpoint, the pound has made a new all-time high in uh, gold. Did that earlier this morning. We haven't seen that in terms of dollars. We haven't seen that in terms of euros out there. But this really adds to the idea that Marcus was uh, suggesting that maybe, you know, what people are doing is positioning for a war out here. But you want to certainly keep track of that. Now, I don't know. We also want to keep track of what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index. I know that when I was making the 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 call that uh, gold made a major bottom, what I also said was that uh, if that's true, we will eventually start seeing gold and the U.S. dollar index moving higher at the same time those will be the, the two of those things should be the so-called flight to quality now here is the fly in the financial ointment right now has that begun has that begun if we take a look at this right hand panel chart we're taking a look at the u.s dollar index out there I've got my synthetic symbol uh, out here. It's just simply a way of stitching together the futures contract so that I can get enough accurate data to understand what the u.s dollar index is telling us well here if we take a look at what gold has done on a weekly basis, last week closed just above, just above the uh, top of that descending trend line. And right now, we see that price this week has pulled back, tested, and rejected that as a support level out there. So this could be telling us about gold headed up to 104.93. So since we still have that daily time frame chart out there that's got that top, until that top fails, we have to respect that. We've just got to respect that. Why? Because there still is that directional correlation between gold. I don't know if this was able to populate or not. It was. So here is uh, the, chart, the The top portion of this chart is uh, gold. The, bot the center portion is the U.S. dollar index. And the bottom portion is the directional correlation. Let me see what I have this set to as far as the number of days inside that directional correlation. It is set to 10. So that's a 10-day average. Let's go ahead and change this to 5. We take a look at a five-day average. So when, so when bars are below zero, it tells you about an inverse relationship between uh, these two instruments out there. So we can see this is still, this is just a five-day average. I can go down to a three-day average. So let's go ahead and put that in there. There's what our three-day average looks like. Well, as soon as it can, oh, 53, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's take a look at a three-day average out there. And even on the three-day average, Marcus, we still have that inverse relationship between the dollar and between Goldilocks. So it says we've still got to pay attention to that daily time frame chart. If that gets negated, well, then it tells us that we're just simply going to go roaring higher out there. So that was a long dissertation, so to speak, on uh, gold. We didn't really have that many questions in there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to those questions. And those questions first coming in about um, Newmont Mining and a GOLD. And uh, Brent is asking, is now the time to take a long position in those? So first, Brent, I would say, yeah, you know, if the if the uh, if you'd have to be looking at a breakout mode, if the if the, if uh, gold is able to take out that TD9 count top pattern, then I'd have to say yes. But if it doesn't, and it pulls back, which is still a possibility with regard to the U.S. dollar index out there, then you've just got to be careful. So let's get to, uh, that's the next request out here. Let's get to take a look at Newmont Mining. So what do we know about Newmont Mining? What we know about it is that I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. We see that price got back to its breakdown resistance level. That was at 34.88. We actually saw one bar close above that, and then price got back down into it. It does not have a TD9 count topping pattern. It does not have a topping pattern whatsoever. In fact, a Newmont Mining could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. Why? Because price ran into resistance at that TD9 count breakdown level. Do I have the white background charts up? I don't. Sorry. Give me a moment here. Thought I did that. There we go. So now you've got them. Now we're taking a look at three Newmont mining charts out there. And you can see that 3488 level. That is a key resistance area. But that's it. It's just now it can be a top. But if it were a top, we would see a profile change in trend. And instead, what we saw back in the trading session of March 20th was price got down and tested and held that bullish structured profile support level. So here's what I would say, Brett, to the extent that you want to take a long position Newmont mining, whenever you do it, at whatever price level you do it, as long as price remains above 3320, you're in a good trade 
out there, potentially a good trade. If price closes below 33.20, odds favor that uh, gold is pulling back and that Newmont Mining would seek 30.93. It's TD nine count breakout level. We do not have anything in the charts right now to suggest that. We can also look at and understand on a daily time frame why Newmont Mining found resistance. TD nine count breakout level. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that on a weekly basis, Newmont Mining was trading into its sell zone. The sell zone was between about 34, I'll give you the exact number, 3409 to 3487. So that clearly held as result as resistance last week and the week before. And quite frankly, this week too. So if price were to close on a weekly basis above 3487, that would be a bullish signal. And that probably goes to uh, a long way to tell us about an A to B equals CD to the upside. How about the monthly time frame chart? The monthly time frame chart last month looked terrible. Why? Because price closed below its breakout level, which we had 3286. But right now we're back above it. However, and this is the however, all that we've done is rallied into resistance. That was the bottom of its profile, old support that now has become resistance. So 3551 is really going to be the key level that Newmont Mining needs to close above, as Todd would say, to get us back into the range out there and at least rally further with uh, 3780 being a price target and 4126 to 4318 out there. So those are what the charts for Newmont Mining are communicating to us. Brent, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for that. You also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol G-O-L-D. So we're pulling that up on our screen as well. What do we have here? In the case of G-O-L-D, we've got a different pattern out here. Here, this has a sell the D point pattern. That's still the D point pattern uh, confirmed out here on the trading day of March the 19th. It did it. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. Uh, price closed above that level. So that pattern actually was negated. It did have a sell the D point pattern. Now what we have is a good old fashioned consolidation with inside its profile levels and 1536 being that one potential support area. The weekly chart sort of tells it all. The all is why did price stop where it did? Well, you got the daily the daily profile, but look, you got the top of that weekly profile. So what you know, Brent, is that 1626, you and everybody else, 1626 is a very key resistance level that uh, GOLD needs to close above to tell us that it wants to rally. I'd also watch 1543. If price closes below 1543, the signal here is it wants lower price. Now, that lower price may just be 1536 or maybe that little swing point that formed out here back on March the 20th, and that was down at 1519. But what I would say is if price closed below 1519, then we're likely headed to the 1418, 1459 level out there. So consolidation on the daily time frame. We know about the resistance level on the uh, weekly. We also know on the monthly time frame, the rally thus far has found resistance at that oscillator and change line. So I hope that helps you out. I'm going to do one more thing out here. What's that one more thing? We're going to go take a look at, since we're having a discussion on gold, I'm going to pull up real quickly while we just have a few moments here. I'm going to pull up. Oh, come on. I'm going to try to pull it up. Uh, the uh, the top holdings with inside the GDX. I know it's coming here soon. Coming to a screen near you. Stick with me. Stick with me. I just got to hit the tab. Here's that tab. Here it is. Here's the tab. So what you're going to see on the screen here, and you can watch it during the break, certainly inside the Tiger's Den, is you'll see the top eight holdings, at least as of last week, the top eight holdings inside of the GDX. Which, by the way, the GDX also has a TD9 count topping pattern. So Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
time to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, folks. Uh, let's see what's going on inside the futures markets. You still have U.S. equity futures trading the upside. Dow's up 170. Uh, the S&P's up 22. NASDAQ up 86. The uh, E-Mini Russell's up about 13. Again, six-tenths of a percent to the upside. Gold up seven bucks. Silver is off three pennies. We're going to take a look at the SMH. Is this for Nicholas? Nicholas writes in, would you please go over the SMH um, in SOX calls? Just about even but uh although i said smh seems in a range to go lower today maybe go higher well it could go lower or higher i'm on board with that right now it is trading higher by the way in the pre-market let me go see where it's at i think it's around 226 last trade fired off at 226 we're looking at the three multi time frames for the smh's out here uh what we can see is that uh, this formed a sell the d point pattern on the daily time frame we got a top on the daily and a top on the weekly nickels the weekly top is a td9 count bot a topping pattern that confirmed last week well, let's start with the daily. You've got to sell the D-point pattern. That confirmed this bearish engulfing candle. That was back on March the 8th. The volume on that candle session with 225 million out made a high out there with 225. So at some point in time, that's with, with good volume. It's likely going to get tested. But right now what we have is a sell the D-point pattern with price consolidated with inside the profiles. Again, in pre-market trade and last trade fired off at 226.20, 40 shares out there. Not a big move or anything, but I see a thousand shares at 226.10, uh, 650 at 226.10 as well. So right now, price is not trading above the top of that profile, which is 230.04. If price were to trade above that, that would be your first potential bullish signal out there. But still, price has got to close above that high, the high that formed on March the 8th at 239.14 to get its mojo back. Otherwise, yeah, you're inside some type of a consolidation pattern. I would say in the daily, we know 230.04 has acted as strong resistance. Support. I'd have to say is probably in the 217.90 level. Anything below that would be some move support to 208.79. The weekly time frame, TD9 count top, completes last week. As it's completing last week, price is pulling back, testing, rejecting that green oscillator and change line. That is a bullish signal. So the weekly chart is neutral. The daily chart is not neutral because you've got price trading with inside the console, with inside the profile levels. The monthly chart is uber bullish. There is no topping pattern. There's an A to B equals C to the upside. I don't have to draw that in. Everybody can visually see that. A bearish reversal candle would confirm its top out there. And that is not what we have in place. We take a look at the SMHs. So long term, monthly, looks like price wants to move higher. Intermediate term, 
The signal is neutral, certainly not bearish. That would change its tune if you saw a close blow about 216.45. And there's a new profile that formed last week, which is a below price. That's a bullish signal. So the semis longer term are suggesting that they want to move higher. And you're exactly correct out there, Nicholas. You just got a consolidation with inside support and resistance. So I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on the SMHs. And best of luck to you there. No other requests that I see. Let me just check the email system one more time and i see uh okay so we covered that uh, for you uh there nicholas um yeah your prop break even they expire tomorrow and probably close them out at uh, with price at the 226 uh, 50 level out there but you've got to make the uh, call that works best for you so uh, mr build asked about doing those horizontal trading ranges so let's get back to uh, those give me a moment i'll change my screen I'm going to try to change the screen, get back to the black background screen. And we'll take a look at what's going on inside the equity markets out here. We'll take a look at the Dow, the S&P, and anything else that I can find. So momentarily, uh, let's go back in time here. Let's take a look at... Where do we have it? So we took a look at uh, gold. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. So let's look at the S&P 500 horizontal trading ranges out here. You've got monthly on the left. What do we see on the left? Well, we see the price got above that key level at 49.95. But what Stevie also has drawn in there are the price channel lines. In fact, let's go ahead and expand out the screen. You can take a look at that. Now, these are the price channel lines here. Uh, you can see when you form one, which I did, I formed these two bottom ones, much like the horizontal uh, trading ranges out here, the diagonal trading ranges act the same way. Once you come up with your first set, uh, your first price channel, then you can add to it that same price distance and you can continue to move higher. So that bottom one is the one, the bo this, this one right here, the one at the bottom and the one above it were the ones that set off, then the following two. Turns out that right now what price is doing is trading right up into that resistance level. That's the top of that price channel. Where is that price at? You know, good question. It's about um, 52.60 or so. So if we were to see a close about 52.60, what the S&P 500 would be suggesting to us over time is a move up to the 59.66 level out there. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, the daily time frame chart does not have any resistance. In fact, you can see that little rising bunch of rising trend lines out there that have held inside the S&P 500. This is suggesting to you and I that it wants to get to 53.49. But what's controlling the price action right now inside of the S&P, I'd have to say, would be that uh, monthly um, uh, channel line out there. The weekly time frame is suggesting to move to 53.63 out there. Now, this also gives us support areas. Support, for example, 49.95. That would be the monthly uh, horizontal trading range below where we're trading. 51.57 on the daily and 47.51 is the price level on the weekly. So those would be the areas to watch on any kind of move lower out there. The S&P 500 for its daily time frame does not have a topping pattern. The ES Mini does out there. So it says, hey, we just have to be careful. That's what the horizontal trading ranges are looking like and communicating to you and I for the S&P. We can take a look at the NDX 100. Here are the NDX 100 charts. What do they show us? They show us that last month, that's the left-hand panel chart, price closed above that key level of 17,493, 943 out there. Don't worry, I'm a little dyslexic, but I'll pick up on things. That suggests they move up to its rising price channel line out there. Where's that at? Depends on when we hit it, but that would be one price target. Let's call it somewhere around 19 something or other, 19, three, four, five. And if price were to get above that level, 2698 is its longer term objective. The weekly time frame chart, you can see the A to B equals CD pattern off of the lows from back here in, uh, this was what, uh, the, the uh, October 2022 lows out there. This A to B equals CD pattern has not completed. In fact, you can see it's only a 0.382 retracement. It's really only 34% retracement out there. What does that tell us? That tells us that not only in prices trade down, what side of that C to D leg? The left side, the strong side. You know what this is telling us, the intermediate term time frame chart for the NDX 100? Not only does it want to go target the 19,297 and 19,549 level, what it really wants to do is get up into that 20,780 area. That is intermediate term time frame out there. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen now. But over the bigger picture, that's what it's communicating. The daily time frame shows us what? It shows that price is hovering around this horizontal trading range at 18,215. We've seen five opens and closes so far in that price area out there. If price closes below that, well, then it becomes that price channel. Today, that price 
latest channel level would be at about 17,908. Tomorrow would be slightly higher than that. And that is what's going on with the NDX 100. We've got about a minute to go in the rest of this session out there. Let's take a look at what the Dow's horizontal trading ranges are selling out, showing us. The Dow running right up into a monthly uh, horizontal trading range, boundary line at 39,780. So that is most certainly a number you can put on your pad of paper. If we close above that, are we off to the races? You know, I've got a couple of different price channels drawn in here. I would say, no, we're not off to the races. I would say that price would need to close above that monthly, uh, next monthly resistance level of that uh, price channel. And that's in the 4,800-ish type area. Here we can see the A to B equals CD pattern inside the Dow did complete the one-to-one -one move. But where's price trading? to the very strong side of that C to D leg out there. What's that tell us? That the Dow wants to do more than a one to one A to B equals C D to the upside on the weekly time frame. That next price projection is 41184. But we ain't gonna get there until we see closes above 39607. So those are your horizontal trading ranges for the for gold, for the S P, for the Dow, and the NDX one hundred. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. 
back up, folks. Thanks for joining me early. Uh, it's 8.54 if you're all listening live, uh, if you're all listening in on the recorded show. Thanks so much for doing that as well. We'll be back to the normal time tomorrow at 11 a.m. out there. We did talk about the U.S. dollar index and the potential for it to move higher. So let's go take a look at what's going on in the three currency pairs that make up 83% of the weight, and that's the euro, the yen, and the pound. If the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher, we need to see these currency pairs weaken out here. Well, in the case of the euro, the euro has formed an A to B equal CD to the downside pattern. It needs a, now it's a, it's pretty close to attaining the one-to-one, -one, but it has not done that just yet. One-to-one -one would get us down to about the 1.079-ish area out there. This retracement, so what you're looking for here is, you, and we are trading below yesterday's low, so that adds the idea that we may continue to weaken. That will put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. If this were to form a bullish reversal candle on this move towards that A to B equal CD bottom out there, then that would say, okay, the U.S. dollar index is likely to start weakening. We don't have that signal as we speak right now. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, as it moves higher on this chart, it is weakening against the U.S. dollar index. Well, this is forming, this is completing a TD9 count top today. That TD9 count top should just take us back to test support at 150.86 or thereabouts. If price closes below that, that's going to suggest that the yen wants to get stronger the U.S. dollar index would get weaker. This is about a 14% weighting out there, and that the yen would go target 147.43. That's not the signal we have just yet, but something to keep an eye on. The Great British Pound has already formed a buy the D point pattern. It did it two days ago when it formed that bullish piercing candle out there. We are trading just slightly below yesterday's low. It's looking like price wants to trade lower as well, so that would weaken itself. Longer term, if you look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that in the euro, it's trading below its green oscillator and change line. It tested and rejected that level this week. That is suggesting that it wants to weaken further. And in the case of the US Japanese yen on its weekly basis, it suggests that it wants to weaken as well, intermediate term time frame. Frame, so it's just the dailies that we've got to deal with. Hey, folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next, and I'll be back with you tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care now.